Hey everyone and welcome to another virtual hangout session with me. My name is Shai and we are putting another artist on the spotlight again. But before I do share to you whom we have on the other line, other line, telephone. <laughs> but yeah, before I tell you who this is, don't forget to like and share this video and invite your friends to join in the conversation. And of course, like our page, Easy Rock Manila. Okay, so today we're hanging out with a phenomenal artist who has sold out headline shows around the UK has gotten the attention of the media like you know the Sunday Times culture MTV UK us here on Easy Rock and of course you guys here in the Philippines all the fans people have said so much praise about her but to me I mean she is an absolute goddess and I mean that because I've been stalking her Instagram and I love her so much <laughs> please welcome Becca hi Becca oh you are so nice thank you like why thank you goodness <laughs> so lovely to be having a little cup of tea with you. I might be having just a glass of water wherever yeah. it is right now. Because, yeah. Okay, Um. so Becca, I know that you've been through a lot of interviews already. They've been asking about your song here and there, but I really got to know, why is your Instagram header Becca on toast? <laughs> I know it's nothing profound. It's not a very profound question, oh. but you know, I'm curious. You know what? I wish there was some kind of amazing story, Shy, for uh -huh. you. It, I was in a um, a pub, which is like a you know British yeah. pub, and I was chatting with one of my dear friends, Steve, and we were trying to find like what handle I could have because Becca was taken, and I was like, do you know what, Steve? I drink so much tea and I eat so much toast, it's going to end up being like Becca on toast, and then we were both like, that's perfect, Why and it's not? like <laughs> Becca on toast wasn't taken, surprisingly, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah. That is so cute. It's such a fun and quirky header. You know, it's not quite f as formal as you'd expect other artists to be, but it's so quirky. Yeah. And yes, it really did get my attention. It's adorable. Becca on toast. So there you go, guys. If you want to follow her on Instagram, it's Becca on toast. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, of course, I want to ask you, you know, the usual questions like, how is the pandemic? over at your area because right now here it's it's not so great it's not the best thing going on so maybe you guys have a uh, better news than we do here you know what i want to send so much love to you guys in the philippines because you've had it so constantly tough and when i'm speaking to like friends in the philippines they're all just saying it is not over and i think where we are we've had this kind of slow progression now to be able to go out and you can almost forget that there's a pandemic kind uh -huh. of um, well that's good yeah which is good but it's like you just then feel for like your brothers and sisters around the world and want to say it's going to be okay I but hope you know gonna... when we when we see you know photos of you guys going out and about it does give us hope that we're yeah. also going to get that. We're going to get there. We're going to be posting photos and videos where we won't be wearing our masks and all that. But yeah, yes. for now, everyone keep uh, keep yourself safe and follow the health protocols no matter what. Okay. So yeah, thank you for sharing your, um, you know, what's going on there with you. But now let's talk about, you know, your music um, and the pandemic. How has things been for you in terms of writing your music during the pandemic? So it's been a bit wild, actually. I, so uh -huh. for everything that you've kind of heard, it was written, or at least that first EP was written pre-pandemic. And so some of the songs were then finished in the pandemic, but okay. my whole career really of just being Becca has been released during the pandemic, which has been like <laughs> the wild, wild west. Um, <laughs> when the first song came out, when I'll Be There came out, I was in my living room at 12 o'clock UK time at night. And it was like, oh, it's out. And that was it. It was like, I was kind of running around my house, you know, in some crazy pajamas, like, and had some spark. <laughs> tried to make it fun. But I think for the those first few months, at least the first sort of seven, eight months, all that excitement and um, all that creativity and all the hardship of trying to get songs done and trusting myself and so much of that journey was just done in my little home. So <laughs> I think it was very formative though. I think, you know, hard things do form us. And I think that has really made it so that I, have a really strong sense of being able to be me and I wasn't pulled in too many directions. Um, but also I think it made the world feel very small. So speaking to, you know, like fr I say friends, fans, but they're my friends in the Philippines was crazy because they just, you know, everyone's at home on their computer able to just message back. So it felt like very close and like family. Um, so do you know what, to be honest, I'm, I'm just grateful and I'm grateful to still be okay. And I'm grateful that my family were okay, but yeah, it was a little bit, it was wild. 
I could imagine how different it would have been if you know it there was no pandemic and you release all yourselves. I think people will be clamoring for you. I don't think you would have had time for us right now, Becca. I will always I, have time. I think not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're awesome. You're awesome. But yeah, it has been quite difficult for a lot of people. It, it's been a different experience for a lot of people with with regards to what they do on a day to day basis, right? So, of course, you are uh, you are not an exception. So, thank you for sharing that uh, that experience to us as well. But I did see that you have started performing on stage already. Like again, I stalk your Instagram. Please, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. Don't <laughs> And I see that you you've had a lot of wild concerts already here and there. So uh, uh, tell us about that. It's been such a gift. I, like performing live. I mean, you know, because you'll have been to you know Han shows and that kind of thing. It's been amazing over the past few years. Performing with those guys, they're my dearest friends, and getting to travel the world has been incredible. But I think I just wasn't emotionally prepared for what it's like to stand on a stage with people who've actually paid money from their bank accounts <laughs> to come and see you. It's like it's so you nuts. for this. <laughs> you say, like people actually saved and they organized themselves and they got there, and the, both the shows were sold out. And I think the first night was in my hometown, and there was a moment just being stood on the stage, hearing people sing back a song that you know I didn't think anyone knew. And they're all singing the words back, and I, it was a—it's the kind of moment where you, you're so full of adrenaline, you can't believe it. But equally, you just want to go and get a duvet and like cry at home Aww. with how amazing it is. So, and I think I love playing live, and it's a—I think as an artist, it's a really important part of you that connects you to the people that you make music for. So having having that has been like a, a new fuel that I haven't had yet, you know, over this past kind of year and a bit. Um, and I just can't wait to get to come out. I come over here to the Philippines and do another hey. show, you know, with you again. Our bank accounts that we saved for goes to you. <laughs> hey, come. Looking forward to that. But uh, you did mention Han earlier, right? Um, you yeah. have been here in Manila with Han way back 2019, if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, could you share to us that experience, or you know, be remind our Filipino fans who was actually there to watch you back then? You know, how was it for you? Oh my gosh, we had the most incredible time. It's one of my favorite runs of any tour that I've ever done because we we did the mall tours. And after having come out and done a few different shows and festivals, to then do these mall tours, you kind of, you're there in a normal day. It's not the night time. It's not in the middle of a forest. It's, you know, in the normal place with normal, wonderful people. And like, I mean, I had my first sign made for me in the Philippines, like in, in Manila, the first sign I've ever had. And, so, and I think being able to be so close to everybody and the way that your malls are, they were kind of surround the stage. So it felt like we were just all together. It was unbelievable, which has made me so excited to come back again. Um, because I think as well, you're, the way that you, as Filipino people, like consume music, you're so committed and so doting and you're happy to like commit yourselves to a show. Whereas in the UK, people can be way too cool for school and then, you know, they kind of stand there, you know, waiting to be impressed. And it, it's not the same. Whereas you're a very giving people. So that really came across. Well, it's a good thing this airs in the Philippines because, you know, your, your friends and family over there. <laughs> no, but it's all good. And you know what I can expect or I can imagine that when you come back here you're not just going to be performing in the malls i know you enjoy that but i can really imagine you to be in a much much bigger stage here in the philippines and again i cannot wait for that your fans here cannot wait for that to happen so please pandemic covid go away we're done Bye -bye. now we're done with you we're over yeah, we're over you <laughs> but again thank you for sharing to us all of your experiences especially the little bit of throwback of 2019 pre-pandemic when you know everyone could just bump into each other and enjoy a concert properly you know oh, <sighs> But yeah, but yeah, until then, we're just going to talk about it virtually for now. And this time, we want to talk about um, your single. It's called Thorn. Do it tell. Is. Tell us about it. I've been so excited to release this song. It's kind of the most, it's probably the most vulnerable song that's come out so far. Uh -huh. And um, it came, It's <laughs> the song began in a bit of a strange way. I'm just going to share with you, Shai, because yeah, I feel... Yeah, go ahead, go <laughs> ahead. I was in the shower and my husband came in, he just opened the door and he said, what would happen if you wrote about the hardest thing in your life? And then he just shut the door. And I was there Hi. less like, <laughs> this was a real intrusion with quite an intense question. Um, but thank God he asked because it kind of, it. I had this line that came straight to mind, which was that thorn in your side is hurting me. And I was kind of shocked that I had this line and was kind of 
thinking, where on earth has this come from? And Thorn is basically a bit of a, it's kind of about my family, a bit of family breakdown growing up, you know, in my big family. And I think it was for me as a, as a grown woman, sort of looking back at that time and reflecting on how it still can affect me and how I, you know, it, it's still quite, um, it can still be quite painful. Um, so it was very cathartic to write about it. And I think so many of my songs have been about love or they've been about, you know, empowerment, but this was, this is something that kind of came from almost like a, a shocking place in myself that I didn't know I needed to go to. Um, but equally the song, it's about that kind of relationship between love and pain, that where we have a lot of love and we feel, you know, so close to people and that's such an, a beautiful thing, there can also be pain, but that's okay. It's okay to have the duality. You know, we don't have to push pain out. Um, and I think it's also about that relationship of, of recognizing what is good pain and what isn't and you know having the boundaries with that and yeah I think for allowing yourself to kind of process through something and come out the other side um, we would like to thank Becca's husband for barging into the bathroom <laughs> while she wasn't you know taking a shower thank yeah, you we would because, like to thank you. Mm -hmm, because of that but we have this you. wonderful hit <laughs> don't make a habit of it husband <laughs> yeah, no you. to your husband don't make a habit of it all right but yeah. um you did mention that it was quite different from your other songs. So that's actually my next question because i know that you do write a lot of encouraging inspirational empowering songs and some love songs here and there then there's this one that just hits you that Ooh. hits you oh well, hello there <laughs> sorry that hits you in a spot that you didn't even realize should be hit you know something like that so um do you intend to write more songs like this in the future or you know i really hope so i think i like to write about things that you know are kind of conversation pieces for us as humans and i don't it's not that i think what's a conversation piece and then write about <laughs> it but I, i'm quite a curious person so i think about that kind of stuff quite a lot and so i think i never want to have something that's off limits with and what I write about and but equally you know the songs are all about the things that I'm going through so I think there really is kind of no the only limit on it is whether I'm processing and thinking through it um but yeah and I think vocally it's in a place that I've not really sung in yet and I wanted it to be in that place that's sort of maybe a bit uncomfortable um because that's kind of how the song felt a little bit for me uh, okay okay because I was yeah. wondering, would, would, a, would a singer always want to reach an uncomfortable tone or note? But then because you, you said that it matches with a feeling, yeah. then, whoa, it's yeah. kind of mind-blowing for me as a, you know, as a listener of your yeah. music, of music in general. It's like, it's a very interesting take on why you choose to put it that way, to sing it that way. Yeah. But yeah, thank you again for sharing that. Now, um, here's a question. Here's a couple of questions actually about yeah. that song and about what you went through back then. A lot of people relate to your song to the core, like I mentioned, right? You know, they went through some sort of similar pain or even worse, maybe. What will you tell them now after you went through what you did? I think my my feeling would just be that you, like there's there's nothing wrong. Can you hear my, my buzzer going? There's nothing <laughs> wrong with pain. Pain is okay. It's sometimes, you know, where you have a lot of care for something, it's also a show of a lot of love. Um, but equally, you you know, it's, it's a powerful thing to have space to process through those things that happen in our lives. We're not just gonna be able to push it under the carpet. Um, it's, it's probably gonna stay there. And so I think there's something quite beautiful about allowing yourself to have the space to process through something um, and that it's okay. And that, you know, everybody has their stuff. And if you don't deal with it, it will linger there as I'm living proof of as a grown woman um, <laughs> with many lingering things. Um, but I think I can definitely be guilty of thinking that life is about everything being perfect and amazing. And actually it's about the journey um, and the journeys, you know, it's okay for it not to all just look sparkly and wonderful and it, and it never will. Um, yeah. 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 But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I totally get that. You know, everyone right now is going through some sort of pain that we feel like, oh, no, it's the end of the world. And I don't want this. But when you yeah. grow up, when you go through it, you guys are going to just laugh at this moment or be grateful even for what you're going through right now. You just so don't true. know just yet. There's like and a gift in everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard. It's hard. But there's a, there is a little gift. There's a gift in all the things that we go through. Um, I just don't know. <laughs> Preach, write a book. Should I write a book? <laughs> so maybe I should, because you know, I can't sing. I can't write lyrics the way you guys do. 
Maybe I could just you know, vlog or write a book about it. But yeah, thanks, thanks for the I would idea. Write it. Do it. I'm gonna write in my notepad right now. Write a book. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you. I guess you know what uh, we are almost out of time, and I really don't want to ask you so, a whole lot more questions. But I do have to let you tell your fans in the Philippines and everywhere else to uh, figure out or tell them where you where we could find you and where we could find your music. Yes, well, my new single "Thorn" is available everywhere, everywhere that you would stream music. Go stream it, and then I would love to know. Like, I'd love to know what you think about it. If you message me on Instagram at Becca on Toast, I read every single one of your messages, and I love them. And we could be friends. Yay! So there you go, guys. Go flood her Instagram, send her all the DMs, slide into her DMs <laughs> in that good way, you know, and tell her yeah. about your experience with her song. Again, Thor in a beautiful, painful song <laughs> beautifully painful song there you go it's 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 contradicting but you will know what i mean when you hear it and that is it thank you so much again becca you for having me thank you thank you and we will see you again soon once again guys my name is shy and this is 96.3 easy rock chest the right rock love you guys bye